Welcome back everybody to another episode and in today's episode by request we're going to be doing a uh, boat tour of my father-in-law's uh, ranger here so stay tuned. Alright guys so today we're going over the tour like I said but before we get into this video at 5,000 subscribers we're doing a rod and reel giveaway so if you guys are not subscribed to the channel uh, go ahead and do that now so you can be entered in the giveaway and also I upload every Monday, Wednesday or Monday, Wednesday, Friday so if you guys want to make sure that you don't miss out on upload hit, a, hit that little bell notification um, next to the subscribe button so you can never miss an upload. Right, guys, so right here is my father-in-law's Ranger. This is a 20 foot, it's a Ranger, a 2001 Ranger uh, 520 VX. Um, and what that means is just the hull here is a little bit different than your standard bass boat. It's kind of like that in-between mixture between uh, your standard hull on a regular bass boat and a multi-species boat. So it's got a little bit deeper hull. Um, the thing is a tank, it cuts through waves really, really well. Um, but yeah, the hull's just a little bit different on these boats. It's one thing that kind of makes these boats specifically very sought after is the fact that uh, they don't make these boats anymore, okay? So this particular design you won't see anymore. A lot of people really, really love these designs. We just seen um, in one of the tournaments we fished, we seen another guy who had, a, I think it was a 22 foot um, uh, VX as well. And uh, he really loved that boat. A lot of people um, look after these uh, this particular hull. Um, but like I said, they don't make them anymore. So the first thing that we have on this boat guys, we're just going to do kind of a walk around on the outside of the boat here, but we had these uh, these steps. My father-in-law had these uh, put on here. These are really, really nice when you're uh, loading um, or unloading the boat, especially if you're by yourself. It really helps for loading the boat um, because when you get the boat onto the trailer, you can come off of here and then you can go ahead and uh, crank up the winch without having to try to like balance and everything there um, or just getting in and out of the boat these these steps are really really nice um, I highly recommend if you can get them on a trailer just to have them put on there I know uh, some companies already have these like standard on their trailers um, but these were just fabricated um, by a company that he took it to and uh, they went ahead and did everything on it so moving down the boat here guys uh, we'll just cover the trailer really really quick not that it's a huge deal pretty self-explanatory we have the trailer here Got a nice spare on here, and then it is just a dual axle trailer. Uh, pretty common on, I think, anything 20 foot or more is going to have a dual axle trailer. Um, if you have an 18 or 19 foot boat, uh, I just, I don't know, dual axle trailers are really, really nice. Um, I had uh, just a single axle on my 17 foot tracker. Um, I guess it justifies the boat, but not as good for pulling. Alright guys, so on the back of the boat here, we have a couple of Minn Kota Talons here. These are eight footers. Uh, right now they're kind of down so we can fit the boat into the garage, um, but usually they're up a little higher. And then we have the big workhorse, and this is a 2009 Mercury uh, 225 Pro XS. Um, I would like to go um, up to a 250 on this, but this uh, particular hull at the time, it probably could handle a 250 just fine, um, but it was only rated for a 225 on here. so. Just have this 225 on here. This thing's a, a beast. It gets through the water pretty good um, and gets this thing on plane really well. And one thing you're really gonna want on a bass boat, guys, if you are looking at one, is a jack plate. Now this is a uh, CMC six inch jack plate here. This works amazing for shallow water, guys. Um, this is one thing that you really, really want. If you're gonna be fishing a lot of shallow water, this just helps so you can pull that motor up really high and get through that shallow water and also get on plane in and out of that shallow water areas. Um, otherwise, you're basically going to be idling into these areas and then idling out of them. And what's nice about the jack plate, like I said, is you can get that motor up and you can get you can get on plane when you're back in there and you can get in and out quickly um, without, uh, without ruining your motor. And then you just have this little ladder thing here. This is kind of nice, I guess, if you're ever in the water with the boat. Um, and then we also have uh, boat buckles on here as well. And these boat buckles are really nice. They're just retractable uh, boat buckles, which is really cool. Um, on my tracker, I didn't have uh, these boat buckles and they just kind of sucked. Um, but these ones are really, really nice. Okay, so we're just going to start with the front deck of the boat here. And first we'll talk about the trolling motor here. Now the trolling motor is a, um, it's a Minn Kota um, Altrex. It's a 112. Uh, this trolling motor is just like godsend. It's, it's before we had a four tracks on here and I'll tell you what, if you, if you can get up to the Altrex, um, having that spot lock is just a huge, huge deal here. So like I said, it's a 112. Uh, there's a recessed uh, foot pedal that was put in this year as well. So that's really nice. And then the electronics was just put on this year. And then this is a Humminbird uh, Helix 10. Um, this unit uh, we put on there, really, really nice for downscan on the front. Um, instead of having to spin that other unit around. Um, what's really nice is having the um, Humminbird chip in there as well. Um, so that you can uh, see the, your contour lines. It really helps when you're trying to uh, 
troll around on a big point that comes out and you really want to make sure that you're getting on the right contour lines to throw out to because sometimes you want to work that ledge up into and it's just nice to see roughly where you're at with that um, with those contour lines okay so the front deck we have uh, three different compartments on the front deck and as you can see it's, it's pretty good front deck here um, we thought about kind of extending this deck back but if we do with the second console there it's not really going to uh, it's gonna really limit your space there so we have the front deck here um, and then we have this uh, this trash cans really handy um, we have it velcroed on but it's really really handy if you're just trying to toss plastics out of the way and there's also this tray here that we just have for some pliers and a scissors if you're trying to cut line um, and then the center compartment here we have all of my father-in-law's tackle in here the net um, this thing's pretty jam-packed uh, with tackle um, another thing that's really nice that we threw on here is these lights um, these flip on and off um, it's really nice when you it's like let's say tournament day right in the morning you're trying to or you're just out there really early in the morning you're trying to rig up these are nice you can see what you're doing um, you got the bump board in here as well um, and that is pretty much all that's in this center console is just a lot of extra tackle um, and die and whatnot so in this compartment here we have uh, just more tackle here so this has got a ton of us uh, in this compartment here we have a ton of different soft plastics we have this little uh, rack here where you can throw your baits on to dry um, but like I said there's just a ton of different soft plastics in here and just a lot more tackle as you can see a lot of plastics in here I don't even know that if we've even used any of these this year but ton of different plastics in here and whatnot um, but definitely really big compartments you can fit a lot in this boat all right so this compartment here is the rod locker so this is uh, not even half of the rods that my father-in-law has they're not even in here but this thing um, has got all the rods that you can fit all the way up it goes way up in there um, this thing's usually packed jam-packed with rods but you can like I said it's, it's just another big area um, big big compartment where you can throw a ton of extra tackle or whatever you'd want to throw in there uh, mainly we just use it for rods all right guys so now moving kind of back on the boat here we have the uh, councils here we have uh, it's a dual council boat here this first council just you know has some miscellaneous items in there extra um, it's kind of nice actually having the second council especially if you're a co-angler um, but it just kind of does get in the way if you're trying to re-rig things but just put uh, extra camera gear and things like that in here um, there's also if you uh, have uh, more rods than you need that you can fit on the front deck you can put rods and slide them down there and strap them down as well and then the front of the boat here we have obviously the steering wheel this just uh, is going to operate your jack plate up and down um, the, this right here just does uh, the, the talons puts them up and down and then we just have this unit here that came uh, with the boat um, does pretty well I think eventually he's gonna end up upgrading it to a 12 a helix 12 on here um, which would be really nice just more to look at um, but for now this thing's been doing well then it also has the hot foot down there we uh, it's not hooked up right now because my father-in-law doesn't prefer to use the hot foot but that's also on this boat if we wanted to use it um, and whatnot and then obviously you have your all your controls down here to operate your, your live well and whatnot as well all right guys so now the back of the boat here the first compartment back here is just uh, kind of where we put um, just we have the scale uh, just some extra some some G juice and just just miscellaneous things that we need for the boat uh, call tags for tournaments extra little prop here for the trolling motor if something were to happen out there uh, this is just loaded with uh, different stuff like that mainly we just use it for um, getting our call tags and scale out of here as well and then this compartment here is got uh, extra rain gear another extra prop here for the big motor if something happens um, some of this stuff right here that uh, it's called a uh, hot sauce and I'd recommend this if you're gonna clean your boat guys um, this stuff just erases a scum line on your boat if you got a good one worked in there spray some of this on rub it off comes right off um, father-in-law's got extra rain gear in here towels rope uh, more miscellaneous items in case we'd ever need anything out on the water also in this box we also have a tool set if uh, we need to do anything out in the water you never know what's gonna happen especially out on the Mississippi River uh, there's wing dams and stuff everywhere you just you never know what's gonna happen you can have a breakdown so you got to be able to work on the boat out there and there's also a first aid kit I suggest that you carry one with you like I said you just never know what can happen at any given moment All right, so now we have the live well here guys pretty self-explanatory you got uh, two separate whoops separate live wells here um, usually we use one for uh, the uh, the uh, short fish and then one for the big fish here uh, live well works good uh, pretty good sized live well as well um, but like I said just pretty self-explanatory just a live well here 
All right, so now moving on to this last compartment. Well, not last, there's two more, but this compartment here, it just has a couple life jackets that we've been using, um, our life jackets, and then um, some of my tackle that I have. Uh, I always bring my own tackle along. I like to fish a little bit different things, um, even though my father-in-law has probably every lure you could think of anyway. Um, but I just throw a lot of my tackle back here. It's easy to get to, especially if I'm off of the back of the boat or just something's going on. Easy to get back here, just more more, more storage as well, uh, just for anything if you didn't want it. If, you're, if uh, my father-in-law was in here by himself, he'd have uh, just more space for anything else. So this last compartment is just where we have um, a little life throw, and then this is all the batteries in here, and then the onboard charger as well. I believe there's what? There's five batteries in here, three go to the trolling motor, and then two are for the big motor here. Um, like I said, there's just this onboard charger here that charges up, uh, I believe, three of the batteries. Um, and then you just gotta charge the other two, but five different batteries on this boat. Um, that's pretty common on fiberglass boats. It's a lot of batteries. I know on my aluminum tracker, I had what, uh, I just had two batteries. I had one for the, uh, the um, trolling motor and one for the cranking battery, and that was it. But uh, on these bigger boats, and uh, especially a bigger trolling motor, 112, those big batteries for that. All right, guys, so one big thing with this boat that my father-in-law is gonna do is he's gonna put in these ion lithium batteries. What that's gonna do is really lighten the load on this boat, okay? We're gonna be able to pull out a lot of extra batteries here, put those in. Um, they're a lot more efficient. They're a lot pricier, but they're way more efficient. It helps the boat get on plane a lot faster. Um, and they also last a, a ton longer. You could pretty much run your trolling motor on full blast if you wanted to all day long and never have to worry about uh, the batteries getting drained. Like I said, that wraps up today's video, guys. Um, if you guys are around the area and you want to get out fishing on the Mississippi River and don't have the means to, um, my father-in-law, James, actually guides out on the Mississippi and around this area. Um, so I will link his contact information down below. So if you guys uh, are looking to get out, do some fishing, or want to guide and you're not from the area and you kind of want to familiarize yourself with the area, go ahead. I'll link his contact information down below so you can get in touch with him guys so that pretty much wraps up the boat tour here if you guys have any questions about the boat or anything um, go ahead drop them in the comments below I'll do my best to answer them um, and like I said if you guys have not subscribed to the channel do that now at 5,000 subscribers we're doing a rod and reel giveaway and also do me a favor go ahead and share this video on Facebook as well get this video out there so we can keep growing the channel and like I said that wraps up to today's video I hope you guys enjoyed the video remember to like and subscribe and until next time keep fishing hot